Hi guys, in this video I want to share with you a project that I started some time ago and recently found the time to pick back up and have a play with. I designed a robotic quadruped which is an animal that has 4 feet and in its current state it has total 12 degrees of freedom or 3 per leg. I was quite experimental about how I arranged the servos and the mechanisms I designed to account for this, but more on that later. Behold, the Alpha 1.3 version of my robotic fox, who I'll be naming Pablo for nostalgia reasons. I have a few design inspirations for this project. There are some obvious ones like Boston Dynamics' Spot Robot and MIT's Cheetah, but I think the first project I caught wind of that showcased a robotic quadruped in a DIY 3D printed sort of setting was James Bruton's Open Dog. While James's progress on that project has been super cool to watch and I really appreciate the engineering and development that's gone into it, I wanted to try and make something drastically smaller and simpler because 1. I live in a relatively small flat and 2. I think I'm just generally more drawn to micro desktop sized projects you can hold in the palm of your hand. This inclination to go smaller led me to the YouTube page Lethic Z, run by Lin Kang Zhang. I remember being enamoured with these videos when I first discovered them, quadruped robots small enough to be pets scuttling around on the floor. He also has bionic hand content, so I would highly recommend you guys visit the Lethic Z YouTube channel. As you guys know, I like to try and make things look cool, sometimes overcomplicating the design in the process, but I hadn't really seen a design for a small quadruped that had articulation at four joints in the leg, which would make it look more lifelike and elegant, I hope. So the rules I laid out for my design were as follows. Firstly, the motors should all be situated in the body of the robot to allow the legs to be more slender, allowing for a greater range of motion and a sleeker appearance. Secondly, the rear legs of the robot would be digitigrade, which is the term for when an animal stands on its toes with the heel lifted, in contrast to humans which stand on the soles of their feet. This anatomical structure usually means that the length of the bone from the toes to the heel is much longer than in plantigrade animals, so you end up with this cool, seemingly backwards bending limb structure. In the animal world, this structure allows a creature to move more quickly and quietly. The front limbs are also digitigrade, but both of the joints bend in the same direction to match the skeletal structure of a fox. I stuck with a simple, single curved spine for the moment. Obviously, I'm missing the tail, neck and head, but I thought it'd be easier to get the most critical parts working first. My design process in Fusion 360 is very messy and chaotic for a brand new design like this. I tend not to make many sketches or really figure out any of the fine details until I'm, until I'm already in CAD, so I frequently backtrack, chop and change and experiment a lot as I figure out the mechanisms. I include a link to the archive file so you can experiment with it yourself, but don't say I didn't warn you about the messiness of my timeline. I started with single leg prototypes, initially looking at a direct drive system, then a belt and pulley, before settling on gears. Fusion's inbuilt gear generator is bare bones, but I've had a lot of success with it. Several of the joints in this design rely on two 3D printed surfaces held together with a screw, pivoting with their faces in contact. For this reason, I tried to make sure that faces which would be in contact were printed face down, to give as smooth as possible a finish. The screws then thread directly into a slightly undersized hole, and this means the screw is locked in nicely with a tiny gap between parts, allowing for smooth motion. In this design, I also used a few captive bearings, and used a circlip to hold them in place. I included a very tiny lip in these joints so that the circlip would stay fixed, and by making this step change with a 45 degree chamfer it meant that I didn't need to use any support while printing. The most complex joint is at the top of the femur. The femur itself is driven directly by the servo, but in order to permit the other degree of motion, which is bending at the knee, there's also a gear which spins freely using the same pivot point. A screw constrains the inner ring of the bearing with a spacer to the femur and threads into the output shaft of the servo. Finally, the two servos controlling the bending of the legs are on a carriage which rotates sandwiched between a servo and a bearing. My hope is that this additional degree of freedom will help with turning, strafing and other motions. I also designed a cap for the feet which I'd intended to print out of a flexible filament which I hoped would give it more grip on the floor but I never got around to it because I spent too long wondering about which type of filament would be grippiest and I suspected that none of them would actually be quite adequate. I printed all of the parts on a Prusa Mini with a 0.6mm nozzle. I've been having a lot of fun with organic supports lately. They're perfect for sections like this where I want to support an overhang but there's something else directly beneath the area I want to support. 
I'm still unsure if organic supports are worth it in simple scenarios where an overhang is directly above the build surface as the supports tend to be harder to remove, but in general I love this new feature. As mentioned, there was minimal cleanup required since I designed it so that almost all the surfaces in contact with each other had a smooth surface finish from being printed directly on the bed, so everything went together nice and quickly. I did have some trouble with these cheap and nasty circlip pliers. I couldn't find a set small enough for the circlips I wanted to use so I actually filed down the pins a little and the pliers themselves didn't close all the way so some of the clips I ended up using some dodgy methods and cramming them in, but everything appeared to work out fine in the end. In order to attach the legs to the servos, I firstly set them all to their rough centre using this old and battered Nilheim Megatronics servo tester. I know that the positions will all be slightly off, but that's okay because I'll find a neutral position for each servo and joint later on. Initially I meant to wire everything up to an onboard servo driver board and then have a cord for power and I2C to control the bot, but I decided that since I already have this servo tester wired up and it was looking like it was close to being on its last legs anyway, that I would just extend each servo wire and route them all through one big umbilical cord straight into the servo tester. Now that I can do PCB design, I'm hoping to revisit the servo tester soon and make something more compact and reliable. This design has served me well, but I think my design skills have improved a lot since then and I'd like to revamp it. Once I had them wired into my Arduino, I started a new sketch and started to find the resting positions of each servo. I also noted whether a positive increment in pulse width used to drive the servo produced an extending or contracting motion. I could have worked these out using mechanics, but it was quicker to just do it through observation, honestly. I used a sine wave in the Arduino code to start moving through some basic motions. I found that the front legs were pretty strong, but the rear legs were weaker by comparison. They do have poorer mechanical advantage due to the mechanism, but I think it's more of an electronics issue. Firstly, all of the servers are being driven simultaneously through this one little power adapter, which I'm sure limits their current a lot. And of course we have the silly umbilical cord, which can't be good. In any case, I got each limb moving well, and I now have a clear understanding of how to drive them all moving forwards. So as for the next steps for this project, I clearly have a lot of development in terms of the control. My goal is to have this be controllable with a joystick, so I will need some kind of system to scale the speed of a walk cycle to an analogue signal, as well as have it be able to strafe and turn. I'm also curious to test out some different systems of control. I started experimenting with importing the assembly into Unity, so an experiment I'd like to do would be to export all of the joint positions from a Unity simulation directly to the robot itself in real time. I also want to design a head and tail. It'd be cool to have some kind of segmented tail design which could sway side to side acting as a counterbalance, and it'd also be cool to design a head which includes some animatronics. I'll have to decide how much additional weight I can get away with in this design since I also need to leave space for a battery and some more electronics. As always, I want to say a huge thanks to my patrons who make it possible for me to keep working on cool projects. Your contributions are appreciated so much and this channel couldn't keep going without you guys. Also, check out my Discord channel for community discussions and find files, project guides and more on my website linked below. Thanks again for watching guys, see you in the next video.